All right, everyone. Um, today is January 15th. It is my nine-year-old's birthday, and oh, it's been a great day. Um, and I got to see all three of my boys and my nephew and my brother and his wife and mom and dad. We went to church and I wanted to um, talk a little bit about the service today. As I'm driving home here, I thought I would just um, kind of put in little snip clips of the church service and what I was reading out of my Bible, but it pretty much was about love never fails. And it was 1 Corinthians, the love chapter, and Paul talking to the people of Corinthia and um, him saying, uh, this is how you are to love each other. And gives the commandments of um, how we are to act as Christians, first of all, and how um, we are not to have the sin of sexual immorality. We are not to um, be sleeping with people we're not married to let alone living together before marriage, um, how you are to never leave your wife or husband, how you are commanded to love your wife or your husband. And, you know, <laughs> going through my divorce, I didn't realize that, um, you know, God is very clear on how we are to be as Christians and how we are to be in those relationships with our spouses and um, he talks about widows and he talks about those who lose their spouse and how you are to um, how you are free to remarry if your spouse passes away but he also talks about divorce, and I love that I have God's Word backing me up when I say it is wrong to file for a divorce. It is not just my feeling, um, and I was highlighting that Bible <laughs> all over the place, you guys. Um, sorry, I gotta eat some of this icy, you guys. It's so good. took my son to Sky Zone today. After church, we went to Chinatown. Then we went to Sky Zone. And I just dropped off all the kids. And um, that icy, whew, it was hot up in there. Anyways, I will show you some clips of uh, the day also at the end of this video. But um, you guys, it just really just touched my heart as I was reading God's Word, um, kind of reading a couple chapters ahead of the pastor, but he's talking about how, um, you know, divorce is so wrong, and he's having a hot flash. I'm eating the icy, got the window down, heater on. I'm, I don't know if I'm hot or cold. But anyways, um, it's very clear, is what I was trying to say, in God's Word, how we are to be um, as Christians and how um, it's wrong to have man with man it specifically says um, woman with woman it is very wrong back then when he was speaking to the, the people Paul was saying 
these are not my words. These are the words of Jesus. And you all are sinning. You all are having all the sexual immorality. And it is wrong. And God says, those who are... Um, those who are not following God's word and living that Christ-filled life are not going to enter the kingdom of heaven. It's very, very clear. Um, and a lot of people will want to argue with me about that. But God says on judgment day, he is going to tell people that I never knew you and they're gonna be claiming but God I did this I went to church and God I did this and I did that and he's gonna say you weren't following me you weren't listening to my commandments so you know what um, God has really laid on my heart when I was listening to the service today Wow it just um, so my circumstances is I really feel like I was unequally out in my marriage because I feel that the sexual immorality my husband was having, the um, having his girlfriend moving in right now um, into his house and living with him and him divorcing his wife and um, just not following is just not following God's word and so by his actions it even proves to me that we were unequally yoked and he claimed to know Christ he claimed to be a Christian and That feeling that we were unequally owed that I had for such a long time has become very, very evident to me, and especially today at church, because God says love never fails. There's a commandment in the Bible that says if you are married, you are to never leave your wife. Never. If you are a Christian. And I just couldn't believe it. But whatever it was, the word was very clear that it is wrong to leave your spouse. It is wrong to file a divorce. And I just got a peace over me because I was reading that and I'm thinking, oh, well, I'm, I'm reading here that um, it's wrong in the first place, but it also says that wives are to submit. They are to follow their husbands. And it just reminded me of when I was going through my separation. My husband said he wanted a divorce and I wrote him a letter and I said, I said, well, if you are wanting this, I don't understand what's going on with you. I don't know what's happened to you. Um, I don't know what's happened to your faith in God because my husband would teach this to my, my 20 year old. He would say, oh, you don't ever do this. And this is how you're supposed to treat a woman. And And he is telling my children um, that aren't even his how to have relationships with people and um, how a Christian, oh, a Christian would be this way and that way. But yet he has now decided to make those decisions himself that are um, against God's word. So I know something had happened to my husband um, and um, maybe, you know, our whole marriage was just a lie. Um, maybe he was fake and he's not really a Christian. 
But the Bible says that there are those who are going to say and believe that they are saved, that they are a Christian. God is very specific and says, you'll know them by their fruit. And he says, and you'll know them by the decisions they make and who they are around. And you will know them by their actions. And don't be deceived because there are those sheep in wolves' clothing. And God says, um, even if you are married to a unbeliever and you did not know that they were an unbeliever until after the marriage, you are to stay with that spouse. Um, and thank God I didn't file for divorce. And I'm thank God that he got me through to a point where that was my husband's decision. It wasn't mine. Because, um, you know, the Bible says that that spiritual person can um, cover spiritually that spouse that is an unbeliever and you guys i'm just so thankful that god and his promises tell us that there is a way out he gives very strict um instructions on why or how you should um and and the reasons that are okay to leave your spouse but again, he also says, if you're unequally yoked and one's a Christian, then that Christian spouse covers spiritually that other spouse who's an unbeliever. And I just thank God for that word. Um, and God also says that it's um, okay now for me to remarry. Um he also says that if that unbeliever leaves the marriage, let it be so. That's what it says. Let it be so. Um, because you don't want to be stuck in a marriage with an unbeliever as a Christian. Trust me. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> um, and those um, women who know that their spouse is an unbeliever, and yet they stay in their marriage wow kudos for them um you know i would have never signed these divorce papers um on my own i would never would have filed i would have never ever left my husband um i would have stayed in an unhappy marriage forever and god is really um saying that that spouse that's the unbeliever if they walk away let them go and that's what the pa pastor told me in counseling he said um you need to let him go let him go and so i did you know that's why i okayed the divorce that's why i mean i couldn't stop it anyways it's what he wanted even if i think it's wrong um my husband needs to make his own decisions on his life. If he wants to have his girlfriend move in with him, that's fine. That's between him and God. If he even wants to um, have lots of girlfriends um, or sexual immorality in his life, that's between him and God. I'm out now. And the more I think about it, the more I am so thankful for my divorce it's tough it's um it's lonely without my husband i was blindsided i was lied to uh i was talking to someone today and it's just flat out wrong and it's just flat out um not showing Christ living in you when you separate your family. And um, today, looking at my child, 
so happy playing with his cousin and his brothers and you know I want to teach my kids right from wrong I have a 20 year old who has a girlfriend they have a child together and I want to teach them this is what God's word says it's not my words but it's his and as Christians, if my children have asked Jesus in their heart and they're claiming to be Christians, I want to show them, just like Paul writing to the Corinthians, listen, everyone, this is what God says. It really, really spoke to me today. Just how God wants us to witness. He wants us to separate ourselves from that sin as a Christian. That's the whole point of being a Christian is you repent of your sins. You make your sins known to everybody. And you say, I am a sinner. You make it known to Christ and you say, please forgive me. And then you turn from those sins. You don't do it anymore. God will give you the desire to stop. You know, if it's pornography, he'll get you to he'll give you what you need to stop looking at that stuff. Maybe he'll make you so poor you can't pay your internet <laughs> or your phone bill. <laughs> but God will give you the the Holy Spirit of discernment. Um, when I was talking to that person earlier today, they said if you are a Christian, you have discernment I can tell you when evil came into my house I felt it I knew it was there that's why I was asking for it to leave it was thick it was like a cloud of evilness came over into my home I knew it I had that discernment when I am asked to be put in a situation with friends of um, who are doing drugs or drinking alcohol or um, telling me you need to leave him because he's blah 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 blah. I want to get away from them. I don't want to hang around them because it's not what God has said. And it's not that I don't love those people. I still love them. They're still my friends. I love everybody. But you need to surround yourself with other Christian, like-minded people. People believe in Jesus dying on the cross, the resurrection of Jesus, the death and burial of Jesus. Not that he was just a man performing miracles, but that he is the Savior. He came and died on the cross for our sins. And I need to be around those people who want to worship him on a daily basis and do what's right and read his word. And they want to have that Holy Spirit living in them. And then they want to go out and like I'm doing right now, they want to go and they want to preach that gospel to other people. I feel like I am a Paul right now in my life. I feel like time is short. It even says that right there. Time is short, people. And this was 2,000 years ago. Paul's writing you know, it, time is short. You all, we got to spread God's word. What's the best way of showing our children that we love them? By action. Today was my son's ninth birthday. I took him out. We went to out to eat at a nice place. We had a family gathering. I gave him all of his gifts. And we organized and um, I decorated his room and gave him his gifts. And we went to church together as a family. Although my kid did fall asleep because um, his dad gave him two Benadryl. <laughs> um, but we are doing things together. And my son says, thank you for showing me, mom, that you love me. Thank you for being such an awesome mom. You're the best mom ever. And he says, thank you 
for a great birthday. I had a great birthday. As a Christian, when we sacrifice for those that we love, like our husbands and our wives, and we are showing them on a daily basis that we love them, there is no question whether they're loved or not. Because our actions are showing we're listening to them. We give them things. We care about them. We hold their hand. We want to spend time in relationship and communication with them. But when you let sin enter, Satan will tell you, oh, just go have sex with that person. Go, go drink that alcohol. Why don't you just go do what you want to do? Because it's fun. God's not going to see you take a bite of that apple. He ain't going to know. This garden's full of fruit. Satan says, this earth is full of doing whatever you want to do, people. And he doesn't want you to be married. He doesn't want you to have that Christian family. And he will come in like a roaring lion, seeking who he could devour. God's word is the truth. He's got all these promises. This is going to happen to you if you sin, people. God says it. I believe it to be true. If you do my commandments, you will be blessed beyond measure. These are the things that I will give to you because you're faithful and you're doing right. You're going to be blessed. I'm going to just give you all the desires of your heart. Only you have to repent of your sins and ask me to come into your life. I'll take over. I'll direct your paths, and I will never fail you. Never fail you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And I love God. I am so in love. Because he keeps his promises. He keeps his vows to me. And now I'm gonna end my video. I'm gonna show you little snip clips of today's fun activities that we did. And um, thanks for watching. Till tomorrow, bye.
Taking my kids to Sky Zone, bouncing around, having a good time. Love single mom life. <laughs> He's in the blue pajamas right here. He's thinking about it. Thank you. 